Well, good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. Today our reader is Morag and she will read a few verses from the New Testament from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Rome. But we begin these reflections with a piece of Chopin, Raindrops, played for us by Ian. The reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. God's love in Christ Jesus. In view of all of this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly not God, who did not even keep back his own son, but offered him for us all. He gave us his son, Will he not also freely give us all things? Who will accuse God's chosen people? God himself declares them not guilty. Who then will condemn them? Not Christ Jesus who died, or rather who was raised to life and is at the right hand side of God, pleading with him for us. Who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble do it, or hardship, or persecution, or hunger, or poverty, or danger, or death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we have complete victory through him who loved us. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. This week a friend emailed and I've taken out the names to protect the innocent. It began, Hi, hope you're all well. The church and junior church needs to get back soon. We were going to the park with our young granddaughter when we passed her late great-grandpa's house and she said, he's in heaven isn't he? She then asked where heaven was and we said, well it's behind the clouds, very high in the sky. Above all the planets? Uh, Yes. Is Jesus and God up there? Uh, Yes. Do Jesus and God look after great-grandpa? Yes. Do they look after skeletons? Hmm, sort of. What does Jesus look like? 
Um, a beard, dark hair, a long gown, we think. What does God look like? Uh, oh, look, that's us at the park. A stressful but pleasant day. That got me thinking of those children's books, Where's Wally? Do you remember them? A series of children's puzzle books with wonderful, colourful, double-page illustrations showing dozens and dozens of people doing lots of amusing things. And the reader's challenge to find a character named Wally hidden in the group. Wally's identified by, by the clothes he's wearing, his red and white stripy shirt, his red and white stripy bobble hat, his glasses not red and white. With a walking stick and a backpack, Wally hikes all over the world, through small towns and city streets, to the beach and to the mountains, to airports and to museums. He's hidden in the pictures throughout the book. He's always in large crowds of people, in busy places. And so to find him you have to search carefully, and sometimes you can barely see him peeking around a corner at you. The drawings also have many red herrings, or should it be red and white stripy herrings, consisting of the use of red and white striped objects. Children love to search for Wally, and when they find him, they, they are so excited. Wherever Wally goes, the book says, his followers will find him. So where's Wally? Where is Wally now? Where is God? We all have times we ask that question at one time or another, our lives have been marked by pain or loss or sorrow. Sometimes we hurt or we watch people we love hurt. It may be due to illness or ageing, trouble in a relationship, the end of a marriage or friendship, the loss of a loved one or just the weariness of life. And sometimes, sometimes it's difficult to sense God's presence. In a world of so much suffering, poverty, fear and hatred, God can seem distant and absent. It's not so much where's Wally, but where is God? Where do we find God? Where do we look for God in this 21st century? Where can we find God in our postmodern world? Or our scientific world? Our violent world? Our unjust world? Our unfair world? Our risk-laden, random world? Where do we see the influence of God? in our world experience a pandemic, going through to a time that none of us have lived through before, when we may have experienced feelings of loss or anxiety or uncertainty. Where do we look for God? Where is God? Where can we possibly hope to find him? You know, in a world of so much suffering, poverty, fear and hatred, in an uncertain pandemic world, where our routines have changed or disappeared altogether. God may seem distant or absent. Where is God? The Bible sometimes speaks of the problem of God's distance or seeming absence. In the Old Testament there's a special phrase for this. It is the hiding of the face of God. And that phrase occurs many times in the Old Testament. The prophets use it and so do the psalmists. Think of Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Or Psalm 27. Do not hide your face from me, O Lord. Or Psalm 88. Why do you hide your face from me? Or the book of Job, chapter 13. God, why do you hide from your face from me and count me as your enemy? These expressions of of loss come from a place of desperation, spoken out of human need, the same kinds of needs we experience, pain, suffering, tragedy, death, loss. Prayers for God's help, O oh Lord help us, we need you, we need to know your presence with us, your strength, your comfort, your healing at this time. The Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann call psalms like this an act of bold faith. Why? Because these psalms insist that as people of faith we experience life as it really is and not in some pretended way. 
Faith that is honest and real. Faith that is willing to ask hard questions of God. Everything we experience in life is a proper subject for conversation with God. And Brueggemann goes on to say everything must be brought to speech before God. Everything must be addressed to God, who is the final reference for all of life. And that means we can bring to God our doubts, our questions, the innocent suffering we see in the world. We can bring to God our anger or disappointment with God. We can bring the hurt and the betrayals we experience in life. We share our doubt and our faith. And we do this. We do this trusting in the love of God that the Apostle Paul spoke of in our reading this morning. The love of God that's not a cosy or sentimental or cheery or sugary sweet love. No, it's a love experienced in moments of doubt and fear and darkness. Paul wrote, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nothing in the powers, nothing in the heights or the depths, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Faith asks the hard question, where is God? The hard question, while trusting in God's goodness, mercy and love. The New Testament faith affirms that we see God revealed to us in Jesus' ministry, his life, his teaching, and ultimately his suffering and death on the cross. The cross stands at the centre of our faith because our faith proclaims that Jesus' death on the cross is the ultimate revelation of God's self-giving love for all the world. In the mystery of the cross, God has experienced the worst that can happen. In the cross, God, hidden in suffering, comes close to us, walks with us, loves us, suffers with us, and dies for us. Although, although God's nature may be hidden and cannot be fully known, what we do know is that God loves us and God is for us and not against us. Scripture teaches us that God primarily works in the world through people, through folks like you and me. You've heard me say, as the body of Christ, we the church are called now to be Jesus' hands, arms, feet and hearts in the world. When we are Christ to people in need, when we offer them love, compassion, a listening ear, a shoulder to cry on, when we offer them help, God is at work in and through us. And that is one of the primary ways in which the hidden face of God is made known, through folks like you and me. Whenever we're willing to speak or act or stand up for truth and integrity and against inequality, racism or injustice, God's love is at work. I began by asking, where's Wally? And then we thought, where is God? If we are faithful to our calling as God's people, God will be at work in us and through us. And there, people will see God's love. We are the hidden face of God in the world. And God calls us, as Jesus said, to be the light of the world, to let our light shine, that others may know God's love. Where is Wally? Where is God? Right here. Right now. And now George and Myra will sing for us and play for us the hymn We Cannot Measure How You Heal and it's to the well-known Scottish tune Ye Banks and Braes. And following this, Dorothy will lead us in our prayers.
Thank you to all who took part in today's worship. Thanks also to Emma and Alan for putting the videos together, uploading them onto the various social media platforms and also the telephone system which enables many of you to join us in worship. It really is team ministry here in Kilbarkin. So let us join together in prayer. Father God, you call each one of us by name. You know us all even more intimately than a father knows his child. You love us all with a love beyond human understanding. And you showed this love when you defended your people as they wandered from country to country long ago. You warned their oppressors not to harm your servants nor to touch your prophets. You showed this love and how far you would go for your children, how you would do anything for them when you sent your son Christ to be an example to all and to die for us on the cross and take away our sins and make us whole. We thank you for this love. Thank you for all you give us and all you continue to give. We thank you and want to shout out your praises from the rooftops. We want to shout your name for all to hear, for all to come to you and to know and love you and for all to benefit from the life lived with you. For you are ever present in our lives, and once accepted in, you do not desert, and you do, do not allow anyone to come between yourself and a faithful servant. We offer our thanks for all we are today, for the freedom we enjoy in our land, for the benefit of education and welfare when we need it. In the past few months, we've been more aware than ever of how blessed we are to have our national health care. But we need not experience added fear if we or our loved ones take ill. We need not fear being left a huge bill and can be assured that treatment is available regardless of ability to pay. We give thanks for that service, for the NHS, for the staff, consultants, nurses, junior doctors, porters, cleaners, admin, staff and caterers, all who are required to make it run smoothly. We offer thanks also for retired staff who broke off their retirement to return to work and ensure their former colleagues had cover and backing in the past few months. We thank you for the ingenuity of mankind, people who have invented machines to help us breathe when our own bodies struggle. We thank you, Lord, for those who can invent medicines to ease suffering to cure diseases and develop tests to gauge who has what illness and enable doctors to treat them accordingly. In a time when our building, buildings are closed, we thank you for those who can develop the technology we are using to worship together right now, for those who have the talents to develop such technology and for those who can turn a simple reflection and a simple prayer and take it into the homes of all our church family. This technology brings us all closer, but we are always united by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit ever present in all our lives, and we thank you for this gift most of all, that which enables us to be constantly in your presence and in your care. We pray for those who need that care more than ever, the lost and lonely, the anxious and the oppressed, those who are broken-hearted, bereaved and separated from those they love. 
when we have no words, we can turn to your spirit, Lord, and know you are there to listen and to comfort. This is our greatest privilege. We offer prayer that more people will come to know you, Lord, will know your grace and your love and care. We offer our prayers as always in Christ's precious name and say together the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We will be back next week and until then, take care, stay well and have a good week. <laughs>